half a juice of lemon. Oh yeah. Hello everyone, my name is Lisa and I'm the Viet Vegan because I'm Viet and I'm vegan and today we're making not a Vietnamese recipe at all. Um, I wouldn't even say it's a Japanese recipe, it's just a noodle recipe that uses ramen noodles. I posted this picture on my Instagram a couple days ago and you guys went pretty nuts over it. So um, you're like, where's the recipe? Where's the recipe? So here's the recipe, sort of. In that one, I used normal firm tofu that I had coated in cornstarch and fried. And I didn't really feel like doing that today. So I just bought pre-fried, oh no, oh no, oh god, puffed tofu balls. I don't know how to, what these are called, but they're just puffy. They're very spongy um, and they are delicious. Yeah, I'm gonna use these instead of the fried ones because I'm being lazy, but you can definitely use those kinds of, that kind of tofu if you so desire. I also used kimchi in that recipe, but because Eddie is gonna be eating this with me, he doesn't really like the flavor of kimchi, so I won't be using this. But if you wanna add a little extra spicy goodness, you can for sure add this. I probably will add this towards the end of it for me. So first what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook the noodles. They look, they look like this. They are gluten-free noodles, because I'm still doing the gluten-free thing, even though I messed up this week, and I'm gonna mess up tomorrow, and I'm gonna mess up again on Saturday. I don't know, that's another video. These are based on millet and brown rice. Like, this company makes other ramen noodles that are gluten-free as well. One is made with, like, jade pearl. Another is, like, forbidden rice. I don't really know. I haven't tried those ones, but I just wanted regular brown noodles, so. That's what we're doing today. So we're gonna fill this with water. All right, so we got the fire going. We got the noodles. Meanwhile, I'm gonna make the sauce. So when I actually made this bowl of noodles, it was actually originally this bowl of noodles. I wanted to just make like a cold tahini noodle bowl, but everything was sticking together and clumping together because you know, that's what gluten-free noodles do. So I decided to add some broth to it and I made the most delicious ramen ever. This is like an accident, but also delicious. If you ever have had non-vegan ramen before, you'll probably know that it's a very rich broth. It's not like a clear broth. It's not like a, I don't know. It's a very rich and fatty broth. So the vegan version that I I had tried um, when I was in LA. It was made with a sunflower seed base and I decided that I didn't feel like blending sunflower seeds. So I'm just gonna use tahini instead, which is what I used in the fluke version that I made anyway. And plus tahini will give it like a really nutty, rich flavor, which uh, is good. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my normal tahini sauce and then I'm gonna add it to this. So you add about, that's like two tablespoons of tahini, half a lemon juiced, Gonna add a tablespoon of gluten-free tamari, or if you have gluten-free soy sauce, that would work as well. This is the Kikkoman brand. I just find this tastes the most like soy sauce to me. The reason why I'm doing this on the side and not in the pot when I'm making the broth is because tahini is a very thick sort of substance, so it would be kind of hard to mix in. Looks like things are boiling away. I'm gonna add the noodles. One, two, please fit, three. Well, close enough. The instructions on the thing say that like it'll, you'll start to have to pull them apart after a couple minutes and you only need to boil them for like maybe four or five minutes. We're gonna let that boil for a little bit. Meanwhile, I'm gonna give this sauce a little tasty taste. Salty, creamy, tahini-y. I'm pumped. So these noodles are actually pretty good. They're like chewy, they have a good shape, they hold good flavor. They do kind of remind me of ramen noodles. So let's give it a little taste test to make sure that they're cooked through. Mmm, perfect. So we're gonna drain them. This is two cups of water. And I'm gonna add another cup. And I just rinsed those noodles quickly because I don't want them to stick. I'm going to divide them in, in between two bowls. Noodles, evenly dividing noodles. We got our noodles over here. I'm gonna set these on the side. Though. So now we're gonna flavor this business. I don't know what this is. Something floating around, that's a fluff. How did that get in there? We're gonna add this business. We're gonna start with a spoonful, a heaping tablespoon first. See how it tastes. Oh, it's so creamy looking already. I'm excited. You know what? I'm just gonna add all of it. You can add more oil if you want, but the tahini is actually pretty fatty, so. And I'm gonna add some more savory flavor to it with my tried and true mushroom broth powder. If you don't know what this is, uh, you can watch this video. I can show you the package of it. And it's basically mushroom broth that's been, what's the word for taking all the moisture out of it? Dehydrated, <laughs> that's the word. So we're gonna add about a tablespoon in, then we're gonna stir it up and see how it goes. Mmm. Oh, I'm gonna add a little bit more. 
If you don't have mushroom broth powder, you can use regular vegetable broth, I guess. It just won't be as like savory. You can add dried mushrooms to your broth or you can add like porcini powder. If you have dried mushrooms, you can add it to this and that will kind of give it the same sort of like meaty flavor. But this mushroom broth powder is the tits. So this is just what I go for all the time. And some of you guys were asking about recommendations for something other than this broth powder because it has a lot of sodium. Honestly, if you're gonna make any soup, you're gonna want it to have flavor. And in order to add flavor, I tend to add salt. So if I wouldn't be, if I wasn't using this mushroom powder, I'd be using salt anyway. So it's pretty much the same sodium content wise. So this is boiling nice. I'm gonna add in the broccoli because this is the one that takes the longest to cook. I'm scared. I'm just gonna gently place these. Oh my God, I'm so scared. Okay, we're fine. Uh, one cup of broccoli just cut kind of smaller so it's a little bit more bite-sized. Next, you're gonna add in the tofu. I cut these on a diagonal in half. In the original photo that I made, I just used bok choy. Um, it was Shanghai bok choy, but I don't have that today, so we're not gonna use that. If you wanna use that, go ahead. I also have some red cabbage. Very, very thinly slice these with a very sharp knife. If you have a mandolin, you can do that as well. I just wanted them like kind of paper thin so that they'd be kind of crunchy, but not too overwhelmingly crunchy. And I'm not gonna add them to the broth because I don't want them to color the broth like a weird color. I'm gonna actually add them on top. So these are probably cooked all the way through. I'm gonna add my spinach last because you know I need my greens. Oh my God, spinach, come back. Don't get caught on fire. Maybe I should have used a bigger pot. All right, so everything is probably adequately cooked through. The broccoli is cooked through. The tofu is adequately heated through. And the spinach is wilted. So we're gonna turn off the heat. I have this handy dandy thing to help me distribute the goodies into the soup a lot better. Goodies are evenly distributed. I'm gonna add a little bit more of this on top because it's pretty. And then the broth. So now I'm gonna give this a little taste to make sure it tastes good. Oh, I'm so excited. It has more of a broccoli flavor to it now because I guess I cooked the broth in the broccoli. I'm gonna add a little bit more sesame seed on top for extra flavor and because apparently we can't have enough sesame in this bowl. Then we're gonna add some kimchi to mine. So I'm just gonna add some in the corner for flavor and adds a little bit of color. And that's it. That is my noodle bowl of ramen, not ramen. I don't know. You basically can make it with anything that you want. You can make it with bok choy, you can make it with oyster mushrooms, and you can like slice the, you can like fry them, you can, what's the one that's like a really thick one that you can cut into like scallops, and then you can fry those. Those were really good. We had those when we went to LA, and those mushrooms, I don't know what they did to them, but they were the most delicious mushrooms of my entire life. If you guys want the recipe, you can click down below. It'll be on the blog with instructions and stuff like that. Uh, in case you hadn't noticed, I got new glasses. Yay, now I can see better. And they're not scratched because my old pair were almost eight years old. No, 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 that's not true. They're like five or six years old. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give this video a like, comment down below on your suggestions on what you would like to add into this or if you'd like to make it or you know, whatever. And uh, subscribe because I'm like really close to 10K, which I didn't think was possible. I don't know what happened. So to all the people that have joined me since my last video, thank you. Welcome to the channel. I hope you enjoy your stay here. And uh, I'm sorry this video is so weird. I'm just in a weird mood today. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys have a delicious day. Bye. Hello everyone. My name is Lisa. Why am I pointing outwards? I don't know what, why do I, how do I hand? Let's get start cooking. Wait, what? That wasn't a sentence. Let's start cooking. What am I doing?